During forward trunk bending, there's a relationship between the lumbar spine and the pelvis, which is described as a lumbar sacral rhythm. During the first phase of trunk flexion, the pelvis is locked by the hip extensors and the lumbar lordosis flattens. After the first 60 degrees of flexion, the pelvis rotates anteriorly around the hip joint axes. The sacrum follows the lumbar spine forwards and mutates into flexion. Mitchell et al. hypothesized that a paradoxical sacral counter-mutation occurs in the extreme of flexion of both standing and sitting. Conversely, upon returning to the standing position, the sacrum will counter-mutate in extension as it follows the lumbar spine, but undergoes a slight mutation during trunk hyperextension. So what does a lumbar sacral rhythm mean? In essence, it means that when the pelvis flexes forward or extends back, the sacrum obviously moves with it. So the majority of that movement occurs about the acetabular axes in relationship to the sacral axes. And there is disagreement as to where exactly those sacral axes are. But when the pelvis flexes forward and the anonymous move in an anterior direction, the sacrum obviously gets pulled with it. And when the, the uh, pelvis goes into extension, the sacrum will also move with it. So a forward movement of the sacrum is mutation, and a backwards uh, rotation into extension is counter mutation. But there has to be a counter to those movements. So when a pelvis moves forward, it can't just be completely rigid and the sacrum follow exactly. When the pelvis goes forward, there has to be a slight counter mutation to absorb shock. So movement of the pelvis is about these axes, but there has to be rotation and there has to be a degree of translation to absorb shock. There are massive forces acting into the pelvis from ground reaction forces below, and there are truncal pressures from descending forces that act on the pelvis. And those forces actually combine to form that closed packed relationship of the sacrum against the, um, the anonymous bones. When the pelvis goes into extension, there's a slight mutation of the sacrum, again, that absorbs shock. So the implications for us as practitioners is that we need to try and understand those intra and extra pelvic forces that act on the pelvis and sacroiliac joint and, and how we can relate that to either pathology and pain and dysfunction around the pelvis or extrinsic to the pelvis. So lower limb dysfunction can affect the pelvis and pelvis can affect lower limb dysfunction. There's a definite synergy there biomechanically and that whole kinetic chain is interrelated in some way or another because of the coupling of the joints. So for us as practitioners, understanding this mechanism allows us to explain away some of the pathologies further away from the pelvis. So when there's dysfunction in the pelvis, it can affect the hip joint, the knee, the foot and further up the kinetic chain, even as far as creating headaches through the pull of the posterior oblique slings from the fascia on occipital frontalis, which is quite common. So you can have a patient that presents with a big toe problem and also exercise induced headaches. But not only that, um, dysfunction that occurs in the rest of the kinetic chain can very much affect the pelvis. Even when the pelvis is functioning really well and you've got all the normal movement patterns of the pelvis, which themselves are quite complicated, it will be affected if there's dysfunction elsewhere. But also as well, you know, if you've got um, a, a lesion or dysfunction in the sacroiliac joint or an adaptation at an onomate level because the force is acting in the acetabulae and, create, and pushing on that seesaw analogy of the way these things rotate, it can really have an enormous effect on uh, muscular function and gait patterns in the rest of the kinetic chain. So your patient comes to you and their only brief is that, you know, I want to get rid of my pain. But for us as practitioners, we really need to have not only a really good understanding of what's going on in the lower limb, but also in the pelvis. So the pelvis is my particular area of interest, my particular area of research. And um, my next course through the Biomechanics Academy is going through um, from a very basic level to quite advanced um, functional biomechanics around pelvis and sacroiliac joint. 
and that's a course that we launched through the Biomechanics Academy in January so, uh, so look out for that. But as ever if you have any questions or challenges on the video or some of the comments I've made please feel free to post below and uh, I'll do my best to answer them uh, in the best way I can. Thank you for watching.